Well, hi, everybody. It's another Conversations With, and uh, my name is Dick Vaughn, and I'm delighted today to have my good friend, Joe Rollinitis. And Joe is, as a lot of you folks who watch us regularly know, is the uh, wonderful gentleman who comes from the Food and Drug Administration, and he brings a lot of great, wonderful advice and, uh, and knowledge to us and shares a lot of his thoughts uh, that sometimes it's real common sense, but, you know, as my dad used to say, whatever happened to common sense? Bless your Sometimes dad. Sometimes we don't use it. Right, you veteran know? of two world wars. Well, he, what a guy. Uh, yeah. I know. But in any event, um, it's time to uh, have Joe back again and talk about some of the things that are going on and we can start. You know, the summer is, is rapidly leaving us. It is. But, uh, you know, we got a weekend coming up and I was watching this morning and I, I watched the news and the weather people come on and they're, they talk about the UV rating and they're telling you, boy, be careful. And, sure. you know, we got that storm that pulled away. There's some little riptide. <laughs> fella drowned yesterday in Nantucket. That's not good. Well, they tell yeah. you stay out of the water and they showed these waves and he went in the water. Yeah, it's tough. That's you tough, know, yeah. So Common sense. It, it, it goes back to when they say, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> we should hope not. Well, anyway. So, Joe, let's chat a little bit about sunscreen and, uh, and what's going on with that? Well, you know, Coach, it, we've still got a lot of warm weather to go. We're a long ways from the oh, Labor, yeah. Labor Day holiday, and people go to the beach way up until like late, late September around oh, yeah. here. So I once again recommend to all your viewers, wear the proper clothing. Get a sun protection factor of 50. That's as high as it goes. A broad spectrum label helps as far as dealing with danger from you know sunburn as well as skin damage. Yep. Remember, our skin is our biggest organ. Right. And in a moment, we're going to talk about tattoos, yeah. which directly impact on the way your skin looks. But yeah, you know, apply sunscreen liberally. If you go into the water, when you get uh, back that's out. That's the key. Make sure you put it back on again. Put it back on again. Uh, small and children. especially for the kids. Small children. Yep. Take care of the kids. You're the advocate for like, you know, a four-year-old safety that's and right. well-being out in the sun. Uh, in New England, you can get a nasty sunburn real early, real quick. Uh, from like 10 to 2, those are primary times yeah. when the, the sun is most direct, most dangerous. Don't be afraid of enjoying yourself out time, outside. Just protect yourself when you go out there. Well, you know, that other thing, Joe, you, you, we, mentioned, we need to mention, and I remember my dear mother, we lived at, she lived at the Cape. We have a place down the Cape. And my mother used to love September because they would be in what they used to call Indian summer. It would be, yeah. And it, and it used to come from about the 12th to the 21st or 2nd of September. Sure. There'd be a week in there where it was magnificent. Yeah. There was no humidity. Temperatures were in the 80s. And she would go down the beach and say, everybody else had gone home. That's right. And, the, and, the, and like she used to say, and we Cape Codders got the Cape back to ourselves. <laughs> and she used to love to go to the beach. So, you know, to, to Joe's point, folks, we can get to a situation where even in September, you know, it's, you get these beautiful days. Oh, they're nice. And you have to protect yourself. They're nice. Yeah, so that, that's a wise thing to remember to do. Read the package, you know, to, talk, yeah. to your, talk to your health care giver. Protect yourself. Protect your kids. You know, don't overdo it. You know, you know wide-brimmed hats and proper sunglasses should be the uniform of the day yeah. on New England beaches. They really should. They really yeah. should be so. Because, boy, that sun, and not only that, but it reflects. People don't realize the sun reflects off the water. It does. And, uh, and you can be standing in the water and get a bad burn. No, you, and, all the time. Yeah. yeah. All the time. And, and yeah. then, of course, the sand is, is a beige or a light, light, very light colored. Mm -hmm. Laying on a blanket, the sun's... In fact, you burn, you, if you're not careful, on a hot day, you can... Your little tootsies get right. burned when you, you stand on that you sand. Feel that, that solar collection that's thing right. going on, and the, the uh, right. sand is warm. So a lot, of, a lot of things to think about, and, uh, but, but it's time to be careful. And it, it's protection, and you want to protect yourself because, uh, you know, one of the one of the most difficult things is is to get end up with a cancerous situation. My yeah. good friend, uh, uh, Dr. Swanton, over in uh, the dermatologist in uh, in Southbridge, um, she's a great lady and uh, talks all the time about that. Right. How right. how people she's don't. She's on the show sometimes. Yes, she yeah, does. I she has done show, yeah. yep. and she's talked about it. How how people just don't even realize the damage that the sun can do to your skin. Correct, correct, that's true. Yeah, there's, there's ways to, to be safe and happy in the sun, and then you can play the, uh, the clown and, and, and not fall. Some simple no, rules no, that's right. to, to be safe and, and be healthy, really. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up, Coach. I appreciate that. Do you want to do tattoo removals? Tattoos. <laughs> you, know, you know, I, Body I, art. I have to be real, real honest. I, I, I go out 
and uh, and I, I I was at one of the little donut stores. I stopped and had a cup of coffee and a donut the other day, and, and you see these very attractive young women come mm -hmm. in, and they have these tattoos that start right on the back of their hand, yeah. run up their whole arm, up the side of their necks, and you say to yourself, "What are you thinking about?" <laughs> you know, and 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 even on their legs, you know, they run them up the side, and and I just now. If that's what they want to do, it, they're their bodies. Correct. You know, good luck to you and the Red Sox. You know, uh, but 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 you got to think about those things. Yeah, and, well, I'm from the federal government. I don't pass blame or judgment. No. It's just uh, we regulate tattoo applications yeah. and the inks, and we also regulate the removal of tattoos. Body art is interesting. It's been around since day one. Oh yeah. Uh, it's well, I a, think the old the soldiers used to that. Uh, yeah, yeah, big time. You're an old. You're an old. An old army. soldier. You're an old army guy. I am. You know, I am. But we've seen from 2012, like I love stats, you know, I'm a stat guy. From 2012 to 2013, we saw the removals, according to the American Dermatological uh, Society, uh, removals were up by 52% in that one, See, one and a half these are year time who, frame. who did it on a whim and then changed their mind. Yeah, people change their mind. You know, yeah, look, then, look good when you're 19, oh, yeah. when you're 25, oh, looking great? for yeah. a job, doesn't look no, so no, good. No. So uh, people people go that way. And, you know, lasers are, I guess, the way to go about removing tattoos. But once again, uh, the different pulse rates of a laser uh, affect the different co colors different, uh, differently. Uh, the blacks are easier to deal with. The reds, the yellows, and the greens are more difficult. Oftentimes, it takes uh, more than one visit. It does take more than one visit to remove many tattoos, and you still can't dodge the scarring. There's oftentimes scarring. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, the wise thing for anybody, those young ladies you see at the donut shops, you got to think before you ink. Yeah. That's sort of trite. But yeah. you do. You really should. You have to be ready to have that. Well, you know, I, I have to share this with you. I, I've got two lovely daughters, and uh, they're, I don't know, 10, 12 years apart. One's the second kid, and the other one's the fifth, last kid, fifth kid. But my youngest daughter called me after she graduated from college, and she was down in Newport, Rhode Island, visiting her older sister. Mm -hmm. And the, the two ladies thought, gee, wouldn't it be fun to go get some tattoos? Sure. So uh, she had, I guess, mentioned it to her mother, who was vociferously against it mm. and ended up saying, well, you better call your father. So, of course, I got the call. You know, the buck ends here, as Harry You're Truman right. used to say. Decisions. And, 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 and I said, look, well, Daddy, it's, it's only going to be a, a, sh a little shamrock. And I said, well, I said, and if it's only going to be a little shamrock, what do you mean by little? One inch, five inch, two inch, half inch? Oh, she says, maybe half inch. Oh, good. I said, well, Think about where's a good place to put it so that you could cover it and, and others can't see it. And so I, and she said, what do you mean? I said, well, I said, if you put it on the side of your top of your leg where your, where your bikini bathing suit goes and you put it under that so that if you're going to the beach, you know, you've got your bathing suit on and nobody can see it. Oh, then you wouldn't mind if I got it. I said, I don't mind if you get it, as long as it's a half inch and it's a shamrock and you put it somewhere where nobody can see it unless you want them to. Oh, okay. Well, they both did that. And, uh, and that was fine and good luck to them. But that's a, one instance or one example of someone who did it discreetly. But some of them, unfortunately, you know, really, really... Uh, yeah. I guess the philosophy probably is that body art is to be shown and that yeah. and, and everything that goes with it. But there's 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 other than laser and certain you know a, a surgical clinical abrasion techniques to remove uh, tattoos. There isn't much of an approach well, for it. That, there they, are no creams that are okay. No, of that. when they put that in, that, doesn't it go down inside? It, it, go, it goes below the surface. Yeah, skin. below yeah, the yeah. surface and of your that's, skin. That's where the permanency of the yeah. ink uh, is really. Yeah. So it's uh, it's something really worth considering. Um, it's it's all the rage. There's no doubt. Even with the increased uh, the numbers number of, of people, people I, that are having them removed, so it's uh, it's still it's still it's it's an artistic approach and probably expression and stuff like yeah. that. And and we just we just go with the techniques. Yeah, well, and regulate them accordingly. Yeah. You know? And they, um, and they'll come up with some, they'll, they'll, but there is a way to properly remove them. Well, it's hard. Uh, the the lasers do it. There's oftentimes scarring. Um, we recommend that people, first of all, think about 
uh, their tattoo before they get it. Uh, talk to the tattoo artist. Make sure that they're you know, have the proper hygienic you know situations in, in place. Don't cross contaminate inks and so forth and so on. Clean needles and the whatnot. Might want to see what they've done before and see if you're comfortable with how they do their work and uh, and then and then go with it from there. It's and once again, as you said, it's it's the decision of the recipient mm. to uh, to go with it. So it's um it's interesting. That's and then I you know there's always the thing that if you got a new boyfriend. Uh, you got to be real careful. Watch out for names. Yeah, names. Yeah, they names, change. Names can change. And, uh, <laughs> That's rough. You know. You know yeah, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. might have to spend some time trying to convince somebody else. To... <laughs> or just to go through the same name as yeah. far as your romantic yeah, involvement go. Is your, is your name Bob? Oh, good. <laughs> then you and I can go we out. Can yeah. Date. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That may be. Yeah. That's that. funny. Uh, yeah. So that that's that's something that uh, that I. I've talked about a lot, not too much on this show. I went back to on my records of, of you know topics that yeah. we talked about, and we talked about applying uh, tattoos, but very rarely ever removing them. Well, no, because that's that, that it, for a long time that you couldn't do it. Yeah, and yeah. Now it's it's a new technology. It, relatively know? new, yeah. yeah. Well, they've been around like, about twenty years using the yeah. laser, and it's gotten better as time yeah. goes on, and that's fair and well it should. Um, you know, you mentioned earlier uh, this is beginning of the the hurricane season, August to October. Yeah. I, I just saw the news today, and there's four of them really? lined right up down in the That's what we don't want to hear. way, way down South Caribbean. Okay. One is going to go, the first one that's going to be, I think it's Harvey. Okay. The first wow. one is going to go into Mexico, over the Me Gulf of Mexico and into Mexico. It's not going to come up here. But the second and third one, uh, the third one will fade, they, they, they said. But the second one and the fourth one look like they may s swing up a little bit okay and so but it's a week and a half away that's good but there's four of them lined and she showed them today they're, oh they're lined right up coming off the african coast well that's intriguing yeah, yeah. we've uh, we've had some luck in the past couple of years yeah. we've missed the big ones yeah but once again okay as, you, as the coach says you got a week and a half to prep yeah you know put together a, a, a travel bag yeah. medications for yourself and you know what for your family when you say to yourself it can't happen to us if you've got any friends in New Orleans, give them a call. Yeah, they'll, they'll tell you different <laughs> They'll tell you, they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll give you the war stories. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, pack for evacuation. Um, have a, an escape plan, a communications plan. And one thing which I, when I was reading my notes over again, um, if you have pets, and if you're going to leave, probably your pets should leave with you. I wouldn't leave the pets behind. You can never tell. Um, but just be aware of that. You remember one, one season, you and I had, a, we, did, we did the evacuation bag right on camera. Yeah. And, yeah. and remember, you know, uh, well, you know, program. another thing, too, is and you mentioned uh, having a plan and escape plan. You know, I, I, I the last three or four days, there's been some tough fires around. OK. And uh, and there was a fire this morning in Methuen. And there was a, a, a couple that they finally got out of there. But they ended one of them. The ladies got burns on her hands Ouch. and then she's uh, inhaled and she's burnt part of her oh. throat. And they rushed her to the hospital. You know, the chief was on this morning. So again, if you if you if you're in a property, you know, have an idea of how you're going to get out of there. Sure, it's right. Nice. You know? Thanks for thanks for emphasizing that, coach. I really appreciate that. You have an evacuation plan. Yeah. And a communications plan. If you, That's if you right. If you're not home and you have to leave the house and, and your kids are elsewhere, or your your wife or your yeah. husband is elsewhere, make sure you you communicate and link up. Where you're going to meet. Going. Yeah, and know where you're going to meet right. if you're all all separated. That's correct. And you know, as as you bless your dad, as he said, common sense. Are we still using it? Well, but it? you see, what happens though is is if people don't have a plan. And, you know, we unfortunately get a, a tough storm and the wife's home, the husband's someplace else, the sure. kids are at football practice or what, and all of a sudden the storm hits and, and, uh, and you know, and we have these flash floods, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, look at Worcester, those, those, those underpasses that fill up, they do. you know, in, in a yeah. heartbeat. Yeah. And uh, so, so you can get a situation where you got six people in the family and they're all in a different location. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's no plan where, where are we going to end up together. Right, right. Should we go to the local church? Sure. Should we go to the school? Right. They, they pick a place that's public sure. where you all can head. Right. 
and, and, you, and you'll know you'll meet there. Right, and the American Red Cross is a good source of information. So uh, your, your media outlets will broadcast yeah. the, the current status of the weather, which is always good. Be attuned to that. Have a radio with batteries in it, because if the electricity goes down, lots of things you've got to face, lots of communication, lots of computerization, uh, unless you're on Wi-Fi. Um, and also, uh, you know, just, uh, just the simple fact that uh, we depend so much on our electronic uh, tools right. and, and, and items. Well, you know, it's today, you, you, they've got these LED uh, uh, flashlights. Right, yeah, those are great. And they're very bright, number yeah, one. Yeah, they're wonderful. But number two, they're inexpensive. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so, for instance, at, at our little place, and there's only two of us, um, in each one of the nightstands, the top drawer of the nightstand, there's a little flashlight. We have one, we have one in every room, at least one in every room, so that no matter where you are in the house, if the lights go out, there's a flashlight that you can get to sure. quickly. It helps a lot. You know? yeah. And, and, is yeah. I mean, if, and a storm is really tough. Well, that's what I'm saying. You get a bad yeah. storm, yeah. and all of a sudden the power goes out at 9 o'clock at night. It's pitch black. Sure. All your little night lights are gone. gone. Everything's I gone. Know. So if you, and they say, Where, where's the flashlight? Yeah. You know? Well, we have, them, we have them in every room. In fact, in our bedroom, Smart. there's one in each nightstand. So you yeah. just open the drawer and you yeah. get a light yeah. right away. Yeah, well, and that, you know, you, we just said something very, very important. When the power does go out, you lose refrigeration because you lose electricity. Yeah. So what you have to do is, if your power is out for a couple hours, your freezer will keep food cold and safe for a long yeah. time. But the, the, that's the freezer part, the basic, you know, non-freezing refrigeration. You have to take a hard, close look after a couple of hours at what's in that's there right. what could possibly be spoiled. That's when right. in doubt, if it smells bad, off color, long time without uh, refrigeration, you ought to throw it out. Yeah. Just, I mean, that's better than getting really, yeah. really sick. And also flooding, uh, surge back up things that you know float in the water that you could contaminate your food oh, yeah. supply, your water supply, have a gallon of water available if you can on backup for one person every day. Five people, that's five gallons a day, yeah. do the math times five is 25. So you ought to have, you know, bottled water is everywhere, Coach. Yeah. We, we all drink and we all have yeah. it. Um, have food, medicine uh, set up, have food for your pets too. Really that's important. another thing, you know, if you have a, a, a situation and, and you know, it was what, four, year, four years ago, four years ago now, we had the, the tornado came through, Sturbridge and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and parts of Charleston and Southbridge and, and, uh, and uh, Brimfield, we had that terrible tornado. And uh, the other thing is people, you know, if, if you have to leave the house, remember to take your medicine with you. Oh, it's important. You oh, know, oh, so and, important. And, and, and if you have to get out of there, and, and if you're vacating um, because a storm is imminent, you, you make sure you bring your medications That's because correct. otherwise yeah. you may not be able to go back and get them. That's correct, yeah. You know, That's right. Because uh, yeah. the tree goes across the road and you can't get back. <laughs> That's the only way to your house and you, you know, finish. Yeah, well. I, and you're right. And MEMA, the Massachusetts Emergency Management Association or agency and, and other, you know, Red Cross will, will provide, you know, generic checklists that you yeah. have there. You really should. So you can check off everything that you have prepacked prior right. to, you know, do it now and don't wait for the, uh, right. the you know, the early October or late September storms um, so that you can be prepared to do this. You mentioned flashlights. So, so important. Lights are so important. You know, it, the worst thing that can happen to you is, is try to walk around a dark, no. pro, a dark house at night yeah. And and you forget that the the uh, lounger on the front of the couch is there. I know. And you walk and hit that thing and land on the floor oh. and hurt yourself. You could be there for three or four or five hours yeah. before anybody knows you're there. Yeah. You, you've added a lot more complication to a bad situation. Yeah. yeah. Well, not only that. Not now. Everybody has these cell phones, and you know if you know there's a storm coming, make sure they're charged. Yeah. Because, because they're worthless if they're not charged. They're like a paperweight. Yeah. <laughs> like what are you going to do with them? Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. And so, uh, you know, all of these little things can add up to one big problem. Sure. And you going know. back after a storm, back home, if the area's been closed off or evacuated, you gotta, you got to make sure you got the okay to go back there from the Red Cross, from MEMA, from whoever Absolutely. has authority over movement. Don't be a tourist. You know, go back and do what you have to do. Right. Don't go back if, you, if, you're, if it's unsafe. Uh, remember refrigeration. Remember uh, things like that. Just play it really safe. Well, we lucky we had a tragedy years. just yesterday. We have these high waves that were 8 to 10 feet high. And everybody was advised, stay out of the water because there's bad riptides. 
and the waves are enormous. And we had a fellow who, and it was, wasn't just him, there was a whole group of them. Oh boy, look at those wonderful waves. Yeah. Let's go in. Where was this called? Nantucket. Okay. And a and, uh, fellow went in the water and never came home. Good. And they tried to go in and get him and they couldn't, they, then they couldn't get in because the waves were so high. And he, he drowned, unfortunately. And, uh, and it was needless. It was a self-inflicted situation. Sure. Where he said, oh, I gotta go and look at those waves. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good challenge. Stay out of there. Yeah, yeah, you know? that's a tough and, time. And Harvey Leonard's been hopping it for three days. Right, right. You know, people yeah. don't realize how, how terrible those riptides can be. And they just yank you out. Yeah, yeah. I guess you have to realize that you gotta prepare well ahead for a storm. Do it right, do it smart. Yeah. Have your checklist, meds, pets, your people, communication. Uh, you know, evac evacuation plan and recovery after a storm can be tough too. Yep. Uh, can be a lot longer than you'd like. You're much more uncomfortable if you're yep. at a Red Cross shelter at the local high school, or yep. church, or Y, wherever you go. You're just not in your environment, no. but you're also probably safe too. Yeah, which is really well. Really you good. know, the, the other thing we have to talk about because, uh, especially coming up to Labor Day, which is a big, you know, sort of uh, the last hurrah. Right. And people say, let's have our big cookout. Right. <laughs> and let's lay those hamburgers out there in the hot sun for a couple of hours. Right. You still do you know, it. Well, you know, I, <laughs> I was at a friend's house. Oh, it was a few years ago now for a barbecue. And it, all his hamburgers were frozen. Mm. So he took them out and he put them on a big, like a turkey platter and laid them all out singular. And then brought them out. He said, well, I'll put them in the sun. That'll, that'll soften them right up. And I said, you're really not going to put them out in the sun, are you? Oh, you yeah. yeah. I says, you know the sun will, is hot. You know what will happen. Not only is it going to soften them, but it could cause you problems with them. Well, yeah, but I, but I can't put them on the grill frozen. Well, first of all, yes, you can. But may I make a suggestion? If you're going to cook them at 1 o'clock, take them out of the refrigerator at 11, 30, 12 o'clock. Leave them right in the kitchen, in the shade, right. and let them naturally thaw themselves down. Do you take down. your recommendation? Come on, I'm on the edge of my seat here well, wondering. Well, I, I chose not to eat his hamburgers. <laughs> does he everything. I don't, I don't know if that's, <laughs> if that's what you wanted to know. I guess so. I, 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 think, I, I think I said, I'll have a hot dog <laughs> myself. <laughs> you know? You're the best. But anyway, the thing is, no, but it, it's, it goes, you know, think, 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 think. Oh, yeah. And you know, you know, it's a great, what a great idea. Let the sun thaw my right. hamburgers. But they're sitting in the sun. Yeah, it's a it's and the sun so that that's heat interesting, yeah. that will start to actually cook the damn things. Yeah, it's that it's interesting. And yeah, what can you do, uh, Richard? I don't I yeah. don't know. I mean, yeah. we've done this show before, and we've sent this message home. And you can't legislate common sense. Your poor dad, he'd be so upset. Right. Um, but you know, it's getting the message out is important, and we do our this yeah. is our due diligence. No, and you know what it is, Joe? It's just it's just <laughs> think a little bit, just. Just think before you do things. You like it, you know? yeah, it'd be nice. And, uh, and, and you'll be fine. You know? <laughs> we sure hope. Yeah, yeah so you know, once again, uh, you know, barbecue, proper food handling safety is real key. Um, you know, the, we are definitely going into the hurricane season. Those four hurricanes that you pointed out off the coast of Africa, I was even aware of that. I should have yeah. checked out before I came down. Oh, they, you, they, they, you know how they show them on the TV? Yeah, it's interesting. And they're stacked yeah, right up. There's I know. One right behind the other. What does that tell you about yeah. the season? I don't know yeah. that. You know, uh, and and like they already know one is going into the Gulf of Mexico. Right. Poor, and that's poor the first man. one. Yeah. And the second one's going to go in up over Cuba and come up by okay. Florida. Okay. And then the third one is, is going to dissipate before it does anything. You hope, yeah. And, then, nice. and then the fourth one, that, and they said, we could we could own that one, you yeah, know. It could tough. come right up the coast, yeah. You know, because yeah. it's it's really churning, sure. And uh, and it could really come right up, right up the coast. Well, your viewers have been warned. We we've told them, you know, you know, pack the stuff you need: rain yep. gear, change of yep. clothing, medicines, food. Take care of the pets. Do the water. That's real big. You know, when you go back to your house, have lights, which is really good. Yep. Full tank of gas and an evacuation plan. Yep. Uh, look at pet-friendly hotels, if you have pets, they're out there. Uh, yeah. You know, do the right thing for all family members involved, two legs or four, yeah. uh, and just uh, just go with it from there. It's just really important. Yeah. Do you want to talk about flu shots? Yeah. We yeah. Need a, we need to talk about flu shots. Yeah, you're the poster guy on flu well, shots. Well, uh, let me tell you, I uh, the minute I see the first signs out, I run right in and get my. Flu you get shot. it forced before anybody well, in New England. Well, you know, I, I know and you I, do. And 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 I'm what I'm trying to do, so you know, I'm working on 
and I think we did it one year with you. We did. We had a running I, camera. I, I went. I went to get. A, did I, one I'm, of us faint? No. I was no. Not I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm waiting to get a call back from a, a doctor and a nurse from one of the local places. Okay. Um, to have them come in, like we did before. That was fun. And they're going to talk about flu shots and give flu shots. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of people are afraid of them. And then there's a. I. I. I, I know that, and I've talked to so many different people about this. There are so many myths out there about flu shots. There are, there are. You know, yeah. and, uh, and, and it, it still stuns me, and, and I use the word stun, stuns me at the number of people who don't get them. That's correct, yeah. yeah there's always leftover vaccine, it seems, um, and there, there are very few you know, adverse effects from the, the flu vaccination. It's, it's a dead virus. Um, and it's just the better way to go for, you know, oh, yeah. eight, six months on up to 90. Well, I, you know, especially, and I think especially, um, and, and I, I have a great physician at Mass General. I have people who watch me regularly. I've talked about Dr. Goral numerous times, right. who is a, uh, he teaches at Harvard Medical School, is a consultant to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Is he your private physician? Yes, he's my PCP guy. Right. And I, he's been my doctor since 1984. Wow. And, uh, and I, I see him twice a year for my physicals. Every six months I see him. And, uh, and, and uh, he just finished his seventh book. But he is, I mean, every time I talk to him, don't get your flu shot. Make sure you get that yeah, flu shot. Yeah, that's why. And, uh, and so I do. I, I uh, you know. I, and you've never had a bad reaction, have you? No. no. I've never had a problem. No, okay. and, uh, and I've had some great winters. Sure. I mean, I'm being honest. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the thing is, uh, and, and I remember when we had the radio station, our dear friend Laurie, not yes. in a hundred years would she get a flu shot. That's correct. I remember her. No yes. way. Yep. No, I'm not going to do it. And that was fine. And she would say every spring, see, I got through the year. Mm. And, uh, and I said, luck. And well, and I would say to her, yes, you did. But 117 others didn't. That's correct. Yeah, they yeah. didn't make it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? You could be aware and of especially, there, especially if you're. And, and Dr. Goral says, you know, a, a, a lot of people say, well, you got to be in your 60s or 70s. Dr. Goral says, if you're 45 or older, get a flu shot. Yeah, and even younger than that, really. You know, yeah. get up. Well, he yeah. says, get everybody should get yeah. it. Yeah. You know, uh, but he says especially as you get older. Compromised you know? immune system. That's have right. An issue there. They That's really right. do. And, and uh, you never know what. Type of flu we're going to get? How bad no, it's going to be? No. Uh, but the the effort is there to, yep. like we do here on TV, to get that message out to you. Your viewers have no excuses for bad behavior. No. You have dedicated your lifetime and career to getting the message out, you know, Coach, and we appreciate that. You know, it, Joe, you and I have talked about this numerous times. You know, it's easier to get it to do it, and then never need it. Correct. Than to need it and not have it. That's the worst and, scenario. And so the bottom line to it is. You know, and you know what? And, and I remember my, my mother used to say it to us all the time as kids growing up. Ultimately, and I said it to my kids, ultimately, we are responsible for ourselves. That's correct. Yeah. You know, when yeah. all else fails, to thine own self be true, as my old friend Billy Shakespeare was fond of saying. And it's true. What you don't ever want to do, folks, is, is give yourself a self-inflicted gunshot wound. <laughs> You know, just because not just a good be, policy. No, coach. <laughs> no, and 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 the the poor fellow who didn't heed, stay out of the water. Right. Oh, All right. Yeah. They'll Sad. be going to his funeral, and 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 the bottom line to it is, you know, when 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 people tell you when when physicians and and various people say get a flu shot, get it. Don't fool around with it. Don't gamble. Get it. I agree. You know, agree. and Joe came all the way out here from Worcester to remind you to get it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we need to have you do that. Yeah, that's yeah. so important. Do yeah, yeah, you ever get a report from the town or from your viewers as to what percentage of the population get their flu shot down here in Chelsea? No, I, 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 really, I really don't. But I do have a lot of folks who, who watch us faithfully. That's good. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and I've had some people who have been on, guests on the show who have said to me, hey, I've had people come in and say they saw me on TV. That's good. And, uh, yeah. And which is good. That's and, an endorsement. Well, and I have to tell you a funny story. We got a few seconds left. That I was at the stop and shop recently, and a fellow was looking at me. Finally, came up and says, "Aren't you Dick Bond?" I yeah. said, "Yes, I am." He said, "Well, I, I, I and I was up at two o'clock. I couldn't sleep. I put on the TV and I watched you till six, 
And I looked at the guy and I said, you watch, you watch me from 2 to 6 in the morning? He said, yeah, but I saw this program and this program. Yeah, I said, an endorsement. And I looked at him and I said, you're crazy. I said, Any, anybody who gets up at 2 o'clock in the morning to watch me, got to be nuts. I said, you should have just gone back to sleep, my friend. But I gave him a hug and it was great to see That's him. That's great. So people mention it, Joe. And, and I'm amazed at the number of people who, who watch the program. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. So. You know, people... people um, I think look for messages, yeah. they look for guidance, yeah. and I think this show is always well, been this, this, But the other thing I might say, this may be deja vu. It's been great, Joe, because I know Joe's retiring, folks, uh, from the FDA, so we wish him the best. Thanks, and there Lord. you have it. There's another Conversations With.